We are live, live. Hello. All right, guys. We're finally live. Sorry for the technical difficulties. The other stream went to the wayside because I'm not even going to explain it to you. Just know, technical difficulties. Welcome to the Vegan Test Kitchen, everyone. I'm glad you all could join me for the live stream. It's super special today. So the uh, we're getting to the end of the Veganomicon. And we have only like 10 episodes left. So I thought it would be really cool to do a live stream of how we actually cook one of the recipes out of it and how we film it. We have a lot of cameras in here and the setup's kind of intricate, I feel like it is anyway. Um, so there's a lot of prep involved and there's a lot of different shots and I always thought it would be cool to see how other YouTubers film their videos. You don't usually see that. So I thought it would be cool to do that. So here we are. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So you'll see me probably do a lot of things like move the cameras around and I won't always be talking to you all, but I will be checking the chat for Q&As uh, every so often. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and I think that is about it. So usually the first thing that I do, we have five cameras. So we have the main camera right here. I'm not gonna, well, I guess I will show you. So we have the main camera right there. And then we have the prep camera, which is where, uh, we do all the cooking and all that, or all the uh, chopping and all that good stuff. Then we have the stove, the oven, or I'm um, sorry, the burner camera. And it's just on this main burner. Then we have the GoPro. And then we have my camera, which I use for what we call glamour shots. And that's like the close ups uh, of doing stuff down here. Uh, anything that's cooking on the stove, if it's anything that's really a close up, that's going to be used with my camera. Let me reposition this to make sure we are good. All right. So one of the cool things that I thought you'd be able to do is watch the actual video after it's edited. This is probably going to be about an hour and a half to two hours, I would imagine. Might be shorter. It's one of the more simple recipes in the Veganomicon, so it might not take that long. But most of our raw video is anywhere from like two hours to like four. It's kind of insane. It depends on how complicated the recipe is. This one's not that complicated, which is why I picked it. So, uh, so yeah, so once I do the, the camera set up, everything's recording already. I usually get the ingredients first, get all the ingredients out, which, you know, I have right here, um, right over there, all that good stuff. And then I'll usually start the video, do my intro, and then we'll do, I usually do the fun facts right away. Even though if you're familiar with our videos, we do the fun facts usually about halfway through. I usually do that right at the beginning because I want to make sure that whatever ingredient we're using, I still have and I'm not chopping it up and you know, I can actually touch it and show you. So yeah, I'm going to start and I'm going to look at the Q&A first, see if you all have any questions. Hey everybody, hey Chris. Hey, sorry, I'm looking at the chat over here. That's why you see the side of my face. Hey Belle, hey Tabby. Hey Charisse, hey Tiffany. Glad y'all could make it. All right, so I'm gonna start. So, Sometimes I have to look back at the recipe because these titles, one thing that I have to say about the Vegan Omicron is the titles are not fantastic. They usually are just very much tell you what is in the, what's in the recipe and that's really it. So like this one is called baby bok choy with crispy shallots and sesame seeds. It doesn't sound like super sexy, but that's what it's called. So.
Welcome back to the Vegan Test Kitchen, everyone. Today, we are doing a very special episode. If you're watching this, uh, just know that we did a live version. So if you're interested in seeing that, click up there. You'll get to see the whole raw footage. It's kind of cool. And if you're watching this live, hey, how are you? So we're making a really simple recipe today. It's called, this is very common. So we're making a really simple recipe today. It's called bok choy with crispy shallots and sesame seeds. It's gonna be fairly simple, sounds delicious. I'm excited. So as always, all the ingredients that you need are listed below. Let's get started. All right, so we have the bok choy right here, which these are adorable. I did have, I thought I was gonna have a hard time finding this. Um, and surprisingly enough, at Whole Foods, I don't know how much you all buy bok choy, but at Whole Foods, um, they were actually not great quality. And I, f I found this at Kroger, and they were great. So it's kind of weird, but, uh, but they're super cute. They do, there are like technically two varieties, I think, of baby bok choy. There's the legit baby bok choy, which is about this size. And then there's like the smaller bok choy, which is just not as big as the regular. Um, but that's, I guess, not technically baby bok choy. I don't know. It's kind of like a small, medium, large. Get the small if you can. All right, so I usually will do the fun facts right now. So we're going to do that. And just so you all know, I usually have to do a lot of takes of this because I don't, I think I've told you all this before, I don't have... There's not like a, a teleprompter or anything like that that we have. It's all, I write it down, but I have to memorize it and then do the takes. So I usually end up doing like two or three, at least two or three takes. Luke would probably argue with that and say I do more than that. Sometimes I do. But uh, yeah, so this is how I do that. Fun fact. Bok choy only contains 13 calories per, nope. Bok choy only contains 13 calories per 100 grams, which comes out to be about a cup and a half, and is recommended to those wanting to lose weight because it stimulates burning of calories. All right, I'm gonna do one more take. Sometimes the second one's better and or the third one. Usually you get in the rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Bok choy only contains 13 calories per 100 grams, which comes out to be about a cup and a half, and is recommended to those wanting to lose weight because it stimulates the burning of calories. This one's a little bit longer, so I'm probably going to screw this up. But beware, bok choy can be dangerous in large amounts. No, I just made that up, and I don't like that. But if you eat a lot of bok choy, beware. One woman ate two to three pounds of bok choy for several months and ended up in a coma. The reason? Because there's an enzyme in bok choy that has been bleh, bleh, bleh. But if you eat a lot of bok choy, beware. One woman ate two to three pounds of bok choy for several months. I didn't say daily. But 
If you love bok choy, beware. One woman ate two to three pounds of bok choy for several months, and she ended up in a coma. The reason? There are enzymes in bok choy that are known to induce the swelling of your thyroid. But if you cook bok choy, it deactivates the enzymes. So, moral story, if you love bok choy, write a will. All right, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just going to do that one. So Luke, use that one. And yes, I do talk to Luke throughout the video because it's easier for him. So he, I don't know if I ever told you all, you probably know this, but Luke does all the editing of the video. So he takes all the raw footage, puts it all together, does his magic, and it comes out great. So usually at the end of that, he'll go through it two to three rounds, and then I'll come through, review it at the end, and we'll make some changes, and then we decide to say, it's great. Okay, so we did the uh, intro to the video and the fun facts. So Val wants to see Luke. Um, if you all, I think you all have might might have seen Luke before. If Luke wants to. Show his face, he can show his face. He's not a huge camera person. He likes to be behind the scenes. So if he wants to, he'll come out. Yeah, sorry, um, Nadia. I don't know if I said your name right. Sorry about the l earlier live stream. We screwed it up. I screwed it up. It wasn't Luke's fault. It was totally mine. So, yeah. So anyway, here we are. Glad you can make it. All right, so we're actually going to get to cooking, because that's what this is. It's a cooking show. So uh, yeah, so sorry, guys. I'm going to talk to the main camera now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is grab one pound of baby bok choy. And just so you know, if you have a hard time finding this, uh, just Check a lots, of, lots of different stores. I didn't have as much trouble as I thought I was going to. Uh, the Whole Foods actually had not great quality of baby bok choy, and I found some awesome uh, quality ones at Kroger, believe it or not. So just go around if you can find it. Uh, they will be about three to four inches in size. This one's a little bit larger. But if you find the larger ones that are even smaller than the normal size ones, get those as well. But I, get, I think technically those are not baby bok choy from what I've read. They're just a smaller variety of the regular. But anyway, grab a pound, and we're going to rinse these out in a special way because the cookbook wants us to slosh them around in a big bowl. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so this is a little, just so you know, when I go over here to rinse, I take my camera. You'll see. I put it over here. It's kind of a big deal. Also, something really funny, I thought, um, look where they put this tag on this baby bok choy. I've never seen any, like, them stick a little tag in the, in the butt of a vegetable before. There you go. Rinsing the bok choy. I'm going to make sure that you all can see. OK, you all can see enough. If you all want a different angle, let me know. I'm going to move this camera around every so often. But just let me know if there's something that you want to see more of. Actually, a lot. We're going to chop up the bok choy first. This also happens a lot. Just 
chopping the bok choy. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is chop the bok choy. We're going to slice off the nice little end of this. And if it's particularly large, we're going to chop off um, these, the stems into several pieces. And this one's, for, there's probably enough in this. I'm just going to go ahead and chop this off separately. So we're not going to rinse this first, which is kind of weird. This one's gross. I don't think I've ever had fresh bok choy like that's not in, say, like a stir fry. So I'm really curious to see what a dish is like that has it as its star. I think it's supposed to be like kind of a subtle sweet, almost like a sweet white cabbage. I'm going to separate these Put the stems over here, weeds over there. So the last time I did a live, well, we've only done two live videos counting this one. And the very first one that we did was Thanksgiving two or three years ago. And seriously, one of the only times I've ever, ever cut myself in the kitchen was during that live video. And it would not stop bleeding. Of course, wouldn't you know? You know, something that I forgot to do was take some glamour shots of the baby bok choy when it was whole. Thankfully, I have one more bunch, so I'm going to do that. It's not one of the prettier ones.
Chopping the bok choy too. So one of the reasons that we're chopping these separately is because the stems will cook a little bit longer than the leaves do. So we want to make sure that those go in first. All right, we got our beautiful bok choy. I think we're good. So now we're going to rinse it. Seems like a weird order to me. Rinsing the bok choy. That happens more than you think. So trying to get everything back in the same shot that it's supposed to be is a little, it's the only downside to this is like you have to make sure everything's the same way it was and it makes you a little OCD. I guess you don't have to, but that's the way my brain works. I'm gonna give these a good rinse after the good slosh. Cause I just don't trust that method. All right, so I'm curious out of all the people watching, how many of you all are vegan? I get the impression that a lot of people that watch these videos are not, so I'm just curious.
Yes, bok choy is very cabbage-y from what I've read. It's been a while since I've actually had it, I feel like, too, so I don't re really remember what it tastes like, but that's what I've read as well. Hey, Savannah, glad you can make it. Oh, and hey, Molly, I saw you on there. You're wa are you watching from the Kroger parking lot, Molly? All right, so the baby box show is rinsed. Okay. We want this to be fairly dry before we put it in our skillet, so I'm gonna just put a little paper towel right there. All right, once our bok choy is rinsed, you're gonna grab our skillet and preheat it to a medium heat. So, fun fact, uh, when it, whenever we do the temperature on the knobs, um, I actually did a whole bunch of stock footage of the different <laughs> varieties so we don't you have to record it every time, which is nice. And I also did that with the temperature on the oven as well. Makes things a little bit easier, just a tad. Yeah, I actually have a salad spinner. I just, I feel like it's just one extra thing to bring out. So one thing that I read about preheating stainless steel is that you should definitely preheat it first before putting the oil in because it's it's actually porous, like you wouldn't think it is, but it is, and so when you heat it, when you preheat it first, then obviously that expands the metal and it makes it less porous. So when you put the oil in afterwards, it stays on the top and it gets nice and non-stick. Uh, but if you put the oil in while it's preheating, then it gets into the pores and it doesn't, it's not as, it doesn't create as much of a non-stick surface. Didn't even realize that, and I have noticed that once I start cooking like that, it does make a difference. So if you don't know that, look it up and incorporate that into your cooking life. It was a good tip that I found, so I feel, I feel like other people would like that too. All right, we're also going to talk, see? All right, before we get too far into this recipe, we're also going to toast our sesame seeds. So grab a small pan. We're going to put this on a low to medium. We don't want to burn the seeds. And we're just going to continuously Shake the pan.
Looks like we have one vegan. Ah, ah, ah. I, I think that's all we have in the chat so far. Listen, all are welcome, okay? Anyone's welcome to the vegan test kitchen. So this is when it gets tricky. When you have two things on the stove, you don't want to burn the legs off of this. Try to get a decent shot. Toasting the sesame seeds. We're just going to toast these until we start smelling it. You can see some little brown seeds starting. Yay, Tara, another vegan. What happens when you get overconfident? Just so y'all know, if you couldn't figure it out, I'm not a professional chef. I just like cooking and making messes. I think we're good. This we're going to put over here. All right, let's go ahead and chop our other stuff. Chopping the shallots and the ginger. Do y'all want a different angle? I'm going to move y'all. 
Let's freshen this up a little bit. And you get to see more of the kitchen that you usually don't. So we have our beautiful fridge right there. And uh, that lovely taboo box. I can't tell you how much I hate that damn thing. And I need to Can you all hear the fan? Is that the issue, Chris? Or are you making a joke? I can't tell. If, you, if there's some loud, OK. I don't know what that, was, that comment was about. Um, so the, oh, OK, I get it. Never mind. So anyway, this damn taboo box. So I've had it there propping this camera up for the entire time. And I'm terrified to like cover it now because I feel like if I do, it's just gonna mess the shot up forever. Cause that's where my brain goes. So usually I try to keep it out of the shots. It's really ugly, but whatever. So anyway, this is gonna be, we'll leave the shot for now. Hold on, how's this look? It's kind of ugly, isn't it? Let's see. I don't know if that's much better or not. How about this? There's such a lag. OK, we're good. We're going to stay right there. All right. All right, while our pan is preheating, grab your ginger and your two shallots. Give them a good chop. Now we're just gonna take a half inch of this ginger, and we're gonna grate this, and then the shallots, we're gonna slice as thinly as possible. All right, I'm going to use the spoon method. I've used the spoon method before. I know y'all have yelled at me about it, about, you know, skinning the, the ginger. And I'm telling you, sometimes it works, and sometimes it just doesn't. And especially when it's small like this. Well, I guess this is working out fairly well. But I almost feel like it's just as much work as chopping it off. I suppose the idea is so that you have more ginger left over. You all haven't seen the cats yet, have you? We're going to show you the cats at some point. I just saw Mulder. I'm surprised he wasn't yelling at me for food. He usually does right when I start filming. OK, I feel like that made more of a mess than was necessary. So I have not been able to find a good tip on peeling shallots because they're kind of in the middle of onions and garlic. And I feel like 
You could crush them, I guess. I think that might help a little bit, similar to garlic. But my method of peeling regular onions doesn't really work on shallots because they're too, they're so small, and if you're not supposed to cut them up in half, then that kind of defeats the purpose. So that wasn't too bad. I think, I guess I'm just making a bigger deal out of it than it, I should. Usually, you know, peeling onions is not, not fun if you don't have a good tried and true method. So as I mentioned, this is one of the last, we only have like 10 episodes or maybe 10 recipes left. Luke might be able to correct me. There's not very many episodes left of the Veganomicon series. We are going to continue after we're done with the Veganomicon. Uh, we have lots of ideas, so we're not going to be going anywhere. Hey Justin, good to see you too. Well, I guess I'm not seeing you, but hi. Say hi to Eric for me to, to me for me too. You know what I'm trying to say. So one thing I'm a little surprised that's not in this recipe is garlic. I love garlic, and I feel like it goes really well with any kind of Asian-inspired dish, which this reminds me of. So if there were any, any time that I would deviate from the recipe, it would be right now. But I'm not going to because we're tasting it. But I'm not going to because we're testing it. After we're good and preheated, throw in your peanut oil.
And we're going to fry our shallots. for about five to six minutes. I think I looked over that camera. This is really screwing me up. For about five to six minutes. Now you want this, these shallots to be nice and crispy brown. You don't want them to be burnt, but these are looking really good. It smells like onion rings in here right now. These can burn really fast, so we're going to take these out. As soon as we start seeing super burnt pieces, the little tiny ones. You know what these remind me of? Those French onion fried things that you put on top of like green bean casserole? That's what this reminds me of. probably can't see this, but I'm going to give you all a sneak peek since, uh, look at that, mmm. Whoa, okay. Putting the shallots on the plate. All right, once we're nice, crispy, golden brown, we're going to take these out with a slotted spoon so that we can leave as much of this oil in there as possible. If you leave a few pieces in there, it's quite all right. 
I'm gonna put this off because it seems really hot. Now, if there's not enough oil in this pan, just add a little bit more. Now, if there's not enough oil in this pan, just add a little bit more. All right, so we're going to take our bok choy. We're going to give this a good pat. We want to make sure this is fairly dry. Since we're putting this in a really hot pan, we don't want as much sp spray back. That's what I call it. See, now I thought, I thought these were getting cooked first, but they're not. So that was my mistake. Uh, we're going to cook those with the leaves. I guess we're just chopping them up so they cook relatively the same. Yes, I'm loving the new stove. Sorry, I keep forgetting which camera to look at. Yes, I'm loving the new stove, Val. It's fantastic. It's kind of a bitch to clean because you got to clean everything. I feel like with the old one, it was just, you know, it was easy to wipe from, I guess, the ceramic top or whatever that top is. This, everything burns on it, so that's the only thing that, that kind of sucks about it. But I still love it because it's 1,200 times better than our old stove. And, just so you all know, we got a new toaster oven. It's a Ninja brand. Uh, let me show it to you before I get cooking more. It's behind this cookbook. It's really cool. Can you see? There we go. It's really cool. We're actually going to do a review on it because we are... Um, we had a hell of a time trying to decide on which toaster oven. That's when you know you're an adult, is when you agonize over your choice of a toaster oven, which is what I did. So we looked up all kinds of reviews and everything. The Ninja, surprisingly, I was a little hesitant, but it was got nothing but great reviews. So, And it's been awesome so far. And the really cool thing, which I'm not going to show you right now because I have to move stuff, is this whole thing hinges up. So it, it takes up a decent amount of space right now, but it actually goes up and it only takes up like this much space. So you have we have more counter space than we did before, which is pretty awesome. All right, back to cooking. Y'all are distracting me. All right, now that our shallots are nice and golden and crispy, we're gonna throw in our ginger, and we're gonna saute this super fast for about 15 seconds. Sauteing ginger. Now we're going to add our bok choy. Let's try 
try to get some into the pan. And once we're good and coated, we're going to stir fry this for about two minutes. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. All right, y'all want to see Mulder? Oh, he's running. There he is. Well, Bear, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, say hi. OK, well, I don't know if you heard him over the loud sizzling. Alexa, stop. So once our leaves start to wilt, and it's been cooking for about two minutes, then we're gonna add our mirin or apple juice and, and our soy sauce. Adding the mirin and soy sauce. And then we're going to cover it up and steam it for about two minutes. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes.
Yes, yeah, so Luke did answer your question, but yes, it does fit a pizza. The Ninja does fit a pizza. It's a little bit bigger than a normal pizza or toaster oven. So yeah, it definitely fits a normal, you know, uh, freezer, frozen, frozen pizza. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't think about that. I hope y'all don't have Alexas. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you're cooking along with me. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, Val, there's a lot of, there's a lot to this. Like most people, I think, don't realize how much how many different angles and different cameras and stuff um, that it takes to, to put this together. And this is a simple recipe. So some of the more complicated ones, it takes a while. Alexa, stop. All right, now we're going to remove the lid, stir fry for about 30 more seconds, and then we're pretty much done. Removing the lid. So I actually turn the heat down a little bit. So little um, trick that I'm doing. Sometimes if I skew from the recipe just a tad. So I could turn it down because it got really super hot. So this, this oven, by the way, tends to heat a little bit higher. So I'm going to probably stir fry it for a little bit longer than 30 seconds, just so you know. But if you watch the actual video, that's probably going to come out in two weeks-ish or so. I probably won't mention this, so it's a little secret that just you and I know. Yes, thank you for the compliment on the shirt. Luke buys the majority of my vegan shirts. I just don't, I don't, I'm really picky with my shirts and surprisingly he picks out decent ones. So I can't complain. All right, we're almost done, y'all. I'm surprised that we were able to get this done. Well, I guess I'm not too surprised. I did specifically pick this recipe because it was one of the shorter ones. Uh, I didn't want it to be super complicated for doing it live. 
So if y'all have any questions or general comments, let me know. We'll probably be ending in about a half an hour or so. What are we at? Let's see, how long have we been streaming for? I don't know, so just over an hour. Not too bad. I'm going to move you all back so you can see what I'm doing. Plating. All right, y'all. I think we're done. So what we're going to do is once we plate this, we're going to top it with some of those crispy shallots and the toasted sesame seeds, and it's going to be delicious. This is another thing that you don't realize. There's so much fussing with the final dish to make sure it looks decent in pictures. So that usually takes a little bit of time. You want to make sure, like, you make sure it's bok choy and there's enough leaves and there's not too many stalks over here, and it's not super messy right there. All kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, these are nice and crispy. So it looks I think we're probably good. The final shot. I might add one more leaf.
didn't really do what I was wanting it to do, but oh well. All right, so our station over here uh, is where we do our final shot for the, um, the thumbnail and our glamour shots at the very end when we, when we you know, pan it and um, get some of those better shots like at the very beginning of the video to show, to like kind of do a preview, what it's going to look like, all that good stuff. This is also one of those times that one of our demon cats named Eve likes to jump up here and join me when I'm doing the shots where there should not be a cat. So I don't have one of those shadow boxes or one of those light boxes um, that you might see other YouTubers do because I feel like the ones that I've seen were too small and I'm sure you can get the bigger ones they're just uh, a little bit they're just they're kind of pricey so this works um, this paper was cheap and I have a, a huge roll of it and um, and it usually looks good in the final product, so you usually can't tell. But it's kind of weird to see that's where I do the pictures. Yeah, that looked really tedious because it was. All right. So,
get you a good view right here. Taste test. Let's try it. All right, so first of all, it smells delightful. Nice and soy saucy, a little bit. The crispy shallots smell delightful. really good. The bok choy does have a light, kind of a sweeter taste. Uh, the, the toppings, the shallots and the sesame seeds, really make this, I feel. Yeah, if you don't know what to do with bok choy or baby bok choy, make this. Uh, you could probably cut back on the oil a little bit. It seems a little, just slightly oily, but I feel like a lot of sautéed, stir-fried, you know, Asian dishes are. If y'all can hear me chewing, I apologize. I hope you can't hear that too much. This is a simple go-to recipe if you love bok choy. I think you should make this. I know I'll probably make it again. All right, y'all. I hope you liked what you saw today. If you did, hit a thumbs up. I would love you for it. Make sure to subscribe and share and comment and all that good stuff. I'll see you all next time. And don't forget to view the live video if you want to see the raw, unedited version. All right, y'all. See you next time. All right, so that was it. How complicated did that look? Wasn't that bad, right? All right, so do you all have any... Yeah, can you hear me? You heard me chewing, couldn't you? I apologize. All right. So do you all have any questions? Uh, let's see. We have, da, 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 we have a space in. Yeah, we have a, yeah, our portable dishwasher. Justin, is your portable dishwasher good? Because I feel like ours does not do that well. Um, and it might be because of the... It might be because of the, um, oh, well, okay. What brand is yours? Mine's GE, okay. Maybe it's the detergent that I use. Maybe that's it, but anyway. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So the rotating veggie pick on the sink is just a, um, we just thought it would be a cool thing, to, just a random thing to change in every episode. It would just be a random vegetable or fruit. So we thought it'd be cool to do. So it changes every episode. I don't know what that is. If any of you all know what that is, let me know. I think it might be a kumquat. That's just the word that comes to mind when I see that. I could be wrong. Let me show you closer up if you can't see it. Yeah, so if you know what that is, let me know. I have no idea. Um, yes, we have a lot of improvised photography equipment. You should see our setup right now that this, is, that this camera is attached to. There's a lot of tape involved. 
Um, so vegan cat food, that's a whole, I feel like you're just, that's a whole, it's a can of worms right there. But I, so I hate the fact that uh, I don't feel comfortable giving my cats um, vegan cat food. I just, I, it, don't, it doesn't seem right to me. I, from the studies that I've seen, it can work for many cats, um, but it's, I've, I've seen issues come up with cats too. And with one of my cats, in, well, they both have special diets. So it's, it, that makes it even harder. Um, I just feel like, I know with dogs it's a little easier and dogs are pretty much omnivores like we are. Cats are just, they're carnivores. That's just the way it is. So I feel bad and I, and I hate the idea that I'm kind of contributing and I'm purchasing cat food um, that's not, but I view that as, you know, rescuing them. It's kind of a give or take. One or, nobody is 100%, I think, vegan. And so that's, I'm just striving to be more consistent in my life. And so th that's one area that I hate, but that's just the way it is. And anyway, so anyway, my, so one of my cats is, he's hyperthyroid. So he has medicine twice a day. He has to be on, he has to be on a limited ingredient diet. And my other cat, she has kidney, issue, kidney stone issues or urinary stone issues. So she's on a special diet. So that makes it even harder too. So anyway, that's how I feel about that. Yes, Justin, I agree. Uh, Fuji persimmon. I've never heard of a Fuji persimmon. It's a persimmon. Okay, so it sounds like it is a persimmon. Got several people saying that. Yeah, so do you all, I don't think there's anything else in our kitchen that you would want to see. We do have a popcorn machine. Popcorn maker, how exciting is that? Yeah, popcorn maker. So we usually have a huge Halloween party every year. And of course this year, it ain't going to happen. And that's one thing that we like to make popcorn for. Um, otherwise, I'll usually make it like maybe once a month if that. I don't make it that much anymore. It's really fattening because I use a lot of coconut oil um, and salt. Well, salt, I guess, isn't terribly fattening. I guess it's just more inflammatory than anything. But um, yeah, so anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. I think we're I think we're gonna wrap it up. If y'all don't have any other questions, then we'll just end it here. So I hope this was interesting for you. Again, I don't feel like I've seen this done by many other YouTubers. I haven't seen the, like a behind the scenes how did they film their episodes. So I hope it was different enough. And uh, I thought Luke was gonna come out. I could show him real quick. Yeah? No, okay. He said no. All right guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, be on the lookout for this episode, the edited version, and let me know what you think. See you guys.